Hey everyone, Dr. Nussi from EasyDOTPhysicals.com back again with another video. And in this one, I am going to give you the top four things that can influence how long you test positive for marijuana THC on a urinalysis. Now I've done videos in the past on the general time frames we quote for testing positive for THC marijuana. Uh, I'll leave a link to one of those videos up here. But the problem is that due to a number of different factors, especially with THC marijuana, the time frames that different individuals can test positive varies greatly. And to prove it, here is a chart directly from the federal government. And as you can see, for a urinalysis, it can be anywhere from three days all the way up to potentially 67 days. So today I'm going to give you the top four reasons why this time frame can vary so greatly. First things first, just a couple of housekeeping items. Please make sure you stay subscribed to this channel. I run a drug testing collection site whenever there are changes to the standards or the protocols. I make update videos. I don't want anybody walking into their next test and having any surprises. If you are interested in real, meaningful drug testing reform, especially when it comes to THC marijuana, please take a second to like this video by clicking down below. That helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people so they become informed as well. And if you want to help support the channel, please check out some of the unique items that I just put up in the spring store listed below. All right, so here we go. The top four factors that are going to influence how long you can test positive for THC marijuana. And these are in order of importance from most important to least important. So number one on the list, the most important factor is how long you have used marijuana and how heavy of a user you are. Now, I'm going to quote some studies and I'll leave links to all of the studies in the description box below. But the first thing we need to do is understand what half-life is. So half-life basically is when you ingest any substance, how long does it take for your body to metabolize it so that there is half the concentration? So if you start off with 100 concentration, how long does it take for you to get to 50? That is the half-life. So there was a study done on the half-life of THC marijuana, and it actually changes depending on how heavy of a user you are. So a light user, it would be about one and a half days. Uh, four days for a moderate user and up to seven days for a heavy user. So just based on how heavy of a user you are changes how slowly your body metabolizes the THC that you ingest. Now I define light users as up to two times per month. A moderate user would be anywhere over two times a month up to two times a week and a heavy user would be three times a week all the way up to daily. So there's been further research that shows that when you initially ingest THC marijuana, the urine concentrations in an individual will go up to 180 nanograms per milliliter, which is well above the typical 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff that we are testing for. So if we apply this half-life uh, rule, we start at 180, we divide that in half, to get to 90. Now in a light user that will take one and a half days. 90 is still over that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff. So we have to divide that in half again to get to 45 nanograms per milliliter. And again, in a light user that takes an additional one and a half days. So three days total to clear that initial concentration of THC that you ingested for a light user. But for a heavy user, it's seven days, so 180 divided by two to get to 90 in seven days, and then 90 divided by two to get 45 under that 50 nanogram per milliliter cutoff, but that takes a full two weeks. So this is why I preach and I advocate in most of my drug testing related videos that people should always home test several times leading up to their official test so they can see if their body is metabolizing and clearing whatever substance they are concerned about from their system before their actual test. And again, I will leave a link to my preferred home drug test in the description box below. All right, number two on this list, second in order of importance, and it's a big one as well, is how much body fat the individual has. So unfortunately, 
THC is a fat soluble substance so it is going to be trapped by body fat so you initially ingest THC and a lot of it will be metabolized and then excreted through your urine and that's that initial dose but then some of it will be stored by your body fat and then later in time maybe weeks later it will be re-released into your bloodstream and then need to be metabolized again now the more body fat that you have the more likely it will be that you release enough concentration into your bloodstream so that your urine concentration for metabolites ticks back over that 50 nanograms per milliliter now coming up very shortly in the future i'm going to do a video breaking down different individuals by body type and by use etc and try to estimate how long each of these individuals will test positive for so make sure you stay subscribed and watch out for that video coming up very soon but in general somebody with a higher body fat percentage has the ability to test positive for longer than somebody with a lower body fat percentage all right number three on this list is going to be activity or exercise so regular sustained exercise over an extended period of time should help continuously metabolize body fat and then the THC stored in that body fat will be turned over into the bloodstream a little bit more quickly than if you were not exercising and metabolized and excreted through the urine. Now, I really don't advise people to start exercising specifically if they know that they have a drug test coming up just as a way to detox faster. I've done a complete video on why I think this is a bad idea. I won't go through all of it on this video. I'll leave a link to that video up here. I'm talking about, about people that are on a regular exercise regime all along and do it continuously and have their metabolism continuously breaking down body fat. So activity is number three on the list. And number four is a factor, but it is a factor that you unfortunately are just not going to be able to control. And that is just genetics and how fast your metabolism runs. So some people are just going to metabolize things quicker, including THC marijuana and be able to clear it from their system quicker. There's nothing you can do about it, but it does play a factor. So I did want to bring it up um, on this video as well. So metabolism is number four on that list. All right. So I hope this was helpful and informative. And until next time, everybody stay safe.